This is Bill North of the Florida Weekend Warriors, and this weekend we are going to change out our front jack on our trailer. It's been sounding like it's going to die for the last two years, and uh, just getting tired of all the loud noise. So this weekend we're going to change it out. I'll show you how loud it is right now. That is pretty loud. Also, the replacement jack we got is a Stromberg. It was highly recommended at the Tampa RV show. And he recommended getting the newest one with the ball screw mechanism. It only comes in one model. It's the Jet 4500. You can see right there, it has this ball screw technology that's supposed to be much quieter. So let's get this install going. One cool feature about this Stromberg jack is that this leg actually drops down so you don't have to lower the jack the whole length of the thing because you can just lower this instead. And it can goes up to 18 inches and the drop leg is uh, four and a half inches. And you can see by this chart that this jack will pretty much handle almost any trailer you have. Now let's see what's in the box. This is obviously the emergency crank handle. So. Here's what it comes with. So it's really just one wire because it's grounded. And there's a fuse for it. So this ends up getting wired directly to the battery. And so it's always active. So let's get this thing started. Just gotta take out three bolts and put three bolts back on. As you can see, this tailgate will not open. We can't get that, not get in the back of our truck when we are hooked up to the camper. It hits right here. So the strategy is we're gonna spin the head around and face it this way. The only real downside is that there's a light up here and it's gonna be shining this way, but we have these huge lights on the back of our camper that we use for backing up anyways. So this is an old Lippert jack. Um, the screws here are 13 millimeters. The new ones are um, 9 sixteenths. So all we should have to do is unscrew these and I think they bolt right into the frame. I don't think there's a nut on the bottom of them. We'll find out in a second. And then just cut the wire and splice the new one on. So all I'm gonna do, I'm gonna cut this power lead right here. And this side, when I cut it, this side going this way is gonna be hot. And I'm gonna put a little rubber boot on it so it doesn't get grounded to the frame and cause any sparks. Just set it aside. Then we should just have to take these three bolts here off. I had already loosened them up. <sighs> and I just have to pull it up through the hole so I'm gonna have to pull this pin off. So I take the foot off. And the jack should come straight off. There we 
go. That's pretty easy. Now, I'm gonna go get the new jack. Let's see if these holes are the same thread. Perfect. So, the old one didn't have any lock washers. The new one comes with some lock washers to put on top of this. So I'll go get the new jack. Be right back. Well, my plan to spin the jack around sideways didn't work. These holes aren't exactly equal distance apart. So try to put it to the side, the holes, the holes won't line up. You'd only be able to get two to three holes. So, anyways, I'm just gonna put it, I guess, the way it was designed. And you can see it's it's gonna interfere with the gate. Still. I just barely oh I need like an inch but I'll just have to deal with it so this jack should still just be way better and way quieter than the old one so let me get it installed Now we just got to go and cut the wire, make it shorter, get some tie wraps to make it look pretty, and connect it up with a connector and make sure I heat the heat shrink. Be right, be right back. This already came with the right connector. It's a uh, yellow one, and it's a heat shrink. So all I have to do is hook up the power. This wire is hot, so just want to make sure you don't touch anything grounded. All I got to do is splice some of it off. Strip some of it off. The stripper. There we go. Just put this on there like that. And crimp it. On these crimpers, they have the different, see the color coding on the end of the uh, thing? You need to use the yellow one because this is a yellow connector. on run it up through here splice it together squeeze it like that then I just need to use the heat shrink I think I'm gonna make sure the propane's turned off before I uh all I need to do now is just heat it you can use a heat gun too I like using these wind resistant lighters so you can control the flame a little better one thing about heat shrink they're full of glue a lot of people don't know that so you got to heat it up till the glue comes out both ends I'll show you close up when I'm done you just got to heat, heat it all around it so it gets even. And you gotta be careful you don't start the thing on fire, because that's easy to do. This plastic will start on fire. You can see it's smoking already. So I got it pretty hot. It's kind of hard to see in the camera, but there's actual glue that comes out the ends right there when you have it completely sealed. And that one looks like I could do it a little better on that one corner. Sorry about the camera. Let's clean up some tie wraps. I'll just 
move this back down the way it was when I got it. Put a couple tie wraps through here. Hold the wires on. Let's put it through like this. Move it all over here. Another one on here for good measure. There we go. Basically done. Now we just got to try it out. So here it is. We got it installed. It's got a nice level on the top and here's where you put the crank in if you have a dead battery so the switch on the left these are waterproof switches so the one on the left is the lights so there's a, there's a side there's a so there's a light on each side which is nice the only thing weird about this jack is this switch here seems reversed so if you push the button down it brings the jack up and, and vice versa. So to bring the jack down, you pull it up. So let's see how much noise this jack makes. I'll turn the light off. I'll get it right there. I guess you can see it. Here we go. So you can see the jack is quieter, but I don't think it's as quiet as the salesman said it was going to be as quiet. So anyways, but I'm happy with it. Um, I feel like it's not going to break anytime soon. And it's a really good brand and it seems to be a good high quality. And at least this one, I don't have to keep a cover on it like my old one because the water would always get in the switches and the lights would come on and I'd end up with a dead battery if I didn't put the water cover over it. So I hope you like this video. Please leave a comment. Like and subscribe to our channel, and we'll see you in our next adventure. See ya!